Hello, thank you for joining me. I'm at a railway station. This is Coltra railway station in Northern Ireland. That's the railway line to Bangor. That way's looking towards Bangor. That way's looking towards Belfast. I've just come from Belfast. I came over to this platform because I wanted to show you the view of the railway station. It looks like it's now a house. We're going out that way. The reason we've come here is because it's home of the Ulster Folk and Transport Museum. We're just going to do the Transport Museum today. I would like to do the Folk Museum one day, but the Transport Museum has probably the finest collection on the whole of the island of Ireland of, um, of railway, railways, tramways and cars. So it's a great place. Lots of steam locos, diesels, electrics, all sorts. It's, it's a really very brilliant museum. I suppose you could almost say it's like the National Railway Museum of Ireland. So that's where we're going to. So we're coming out to this end of the station. See the footbridge here. They've just made an announcement saying there is another train coming, so we might see that by the time we get up on the bridge. I didn't actually hear what time. There's no um, dot matrix indicators or anything like that to tell you when the train's coming, but I think it'll be fairly soon. So we come up to here, and as I say, that's we're looking towards Bangor. I have to walk off down that footpath to the museum. It's about where the bridge is. So transport museum's on that side, and the folk museum's on that side. There is also a section of line, can't see up there, there's a junction coming off the main line into the museum, but it's very rarely, if ever, used. So I'm going to try and have a look at that, and I'll just show you, that's quite a nice view of the railway station. So, can't hear that train coming, so I'm going to continue walking down to the railway museum. I was walking down the path and I can hear the train coming. So I'll show you a Northern Irish train for those of you who don't know what they're like. Have a look. It's just coming. That was 3014. Now, regarding Northern Irish trains, I have pretty much seen all of them. This morning I was down to needing to see just five of them. I saw two of the 3000 series trains, so I'm down to needing to see just one more of them and two of the 4000 series. The 4000 series are very similar. The 3000 series actually have a, a yellow circle on the front, whilst the 4000 series have a slightly different livery on the front. They're both built by CAF, built in Zaragoza in Spain. They've recently lengthened some of the 4000 series cars, so you've got some that are free cars and some that are six cars. And if you're travelling on the London Dairy Line, six cars are very useful. Now we just get to here, a little like Lichgate thing. So the museum oh, continues. I thought perhaps we'd be at the museum, we we'll continue down this path. It's quite exciting. I have been to this museum before, I'm trying to think how long ago now, probably about 2012. Um, it is a very good museum. Oh yeah, so we get to the junction here. It says Folk Museum that way, and Transport Museum entrance. There's the, the building. Now, let's have a look. Oh yeah, and then that way, it says Coltra Station. This is the way to the Folk Museum, where we're not going to video for the future, perhaps. Um, I think it's more of a something. What I'm hoping to see from this bridge is the junction into the museum. So, that's looking back towards Coltra, where we've just been. Ah, oh, yeah, now. If we look down there, you can just see and there is, I don't know how well the camera's been out, there is a, there's a set of points. And just one track going in, so everything could be brought in and out by rail. Anyway, I'm going to go and find some, we've seen some modern trains, let's go and find some historic old trains. I've just paid to go in, I'm really quite excited, I have been here before as I said, but Looking forward to rediscovering it again because that was a few years ago. So you come through this glass-like tunnel. That's the building there. On this side though, that's about that link from the National Rail Network. You can just see it down there. It's a railway line. So the, the Bangor line is just over there. And the railway line goes into the building. I don't think it's used much, but it probably could be used. So we're going to go into the railway gallery, which was opened by His Royal Highness the Duke of Edinburgh in 1994. This is the really exciting railway gallery. So have a look at this, we come into here. 
and we're kind of up on this platform and you look down and just about everywhere you look there are steam locos diesel locos rail buses more diesel locos more rail buses another steam loco it's really quite exciting you're just like well, which way should we go this all looks so so exciting but, uh, so we'll have to have a look around it's it's exciting to me because it's different it's not you're not going to see a black five here or the typical locos you'd see at a british rail museum although obviously we are in the uk you're going to see things like this loco number 600 i think her name's may she's i think she probably is the biggest steam loco on the island of ireland and then have a look down there we'll go and have a look at all these locos closer and um another nice large tank engine obviously a lot of these locos are not my usual what i'm used to because they're all various different Irish railway companies and I've I know a bit about the Irish railways but not um, as much as I perhaps do the British railways so we've got to work our way down this this long um, walkway taking us down but this to me as we walk down here all adds to the fun that as you walk down the museum kind of opens up and reveals itself you see different views of the loco so you get a great view of, like I said I think her name's Maeve apologies if it's not Gaelic name, or Gaelic name, sorry. Gaelic Scottish, Gaelic is Irish. So, it'd be lovely to see her running again. I don't know if we ever will, but never say never. Anyway, continue to go down here. Also, as I like brutalist architecture, I quite like this part of the architecture. Look at that. I like the architecture as much as I like the exhibits of this museum. So, as we almost make our way down to ground, Revealing more views, got a narrow gauge loco there, standard gauge, as I said, this is all, when I say standard gauge, for the rest of this video, if I say standard gauge, unless I say otherwise, I'm talking about Irish standard gauge, five foot three, not the British and most of the world standard gauge of four foot eight and a half inches. There is, of course, one four foot eight and a half inch gauge railway on the island of Ireland, the trams in Dublin are four foot eight and a half inches, but other than that, to my knowledge, there are no other four foot eight and a half inches gauge railways on the island of Ireland anymore. There have been in the past. Anyway, here we have, I'm sure we've all had a pint of Guinness at some point. This is one of the diesel locos for the Guinness Brewery. I might do a diesel bash down to Dublin. I'm staying in Belfast at the moment and I'm thinking of going to the Guinness Brewery. I probably won't make a video, but I believe there are some similar locos on display there. Now, what they used to do, they used to, used to get a ride around the brewery by train. Now, I would have done that by now, because I've been to Dublin a few times, if you've still got a train ride, but you don't. But you do get to see the locos. And this is probably the most unusual loco we're going to see here. This is a dual gauge shunting loco. So, the diesel loco you see there and this steam loco, these were part of the Guinness Brewery, and they're 18 inches. There's a nice little model. Okay, this track's a bit shorter, but you can get a view, there's one there. About 18 inches, and there's, there's still a fair bit of 18 inch goes track around Dublin Brewery, the Guinness Brewery. But what they used to do is they could actually lift this loco and put it into what was called a haulage truck that was five foot three inch gauge. So effectively, it was a dual gauge locomotive, which really, I should think, unique. So it was built in Dublin. Um, in, oops, I'm not sure if that's, that must be the works number. One, uh, oh, built in 1905, that's it, and it's. 190, it's works number. Sticking with narrow gauge, we have narrow gauge diesel, narrow gauge diesel, Irish gauge diesel, that's Falcon. I always think that looks like a giant miniature loco. Think of the miniature locos you get at places like, oh, where did I go? Well, I saw one like Aldney, not Aldney, I haven't been to Aldney, Guernsey on the Channel Islands. I was thinking of railways on islands, full sorts of Anyway, on um, in Guernsey on Channel 1, they've got a miniature railway and they've got a loco that looks a bit like that. You want to see, have a look at it on screen now. So go from, as I said, Irish gauge to narrow gauge. This is one of those videos, I should have bought a tape measure with me and I could have found out exactly what gauge all these locos are. But anyway, maybe another time. There's some models there. Now this is interesting, this bench is from Great Victoria Street. I started my journey today at Belfast Great Victoria Street and as you know, I caught the train to Coltra. Belfast has had an interesting history of Termini. I'm not going to try and attempt to go through it, but this map helps out a bit. That is Belfast Great Victoria Street. This is the River Luggan. There used to be a station called Queen's Quay, and there used to be a station up there called York Road. 
Now we would have come around here and there was a station somewhere called Windsor, which no longer exists. About here somewhere is what's now called Larnion Place. It used to be known as Belfast Central. I came over this bridge here over the Lagoon and then I came up here, up the Bangor Line. There's now the Cross Harbour Link Line, which kind of goes across there. It was paid for in the 90s or late, late, late 80s, early 90s, over the early 90s by the European Regional Development Fund. It runs up here and uh, that's the old York Road terminus. They built a new station next to it called York Gate. So it effectively links the railways up to Londonderry with the railways down to Dublin. So that um, gives you an idea of the railways around Belfast. Perhaps one day, I don't think I'll do it today, I could do a video on the railways of Belfast and how it all worked out because it's fairly complex history. So we come to here, it's interesting. There was um, an atmospheric railway, a bit like Brunel ran down in Devon, there was also one in Ireland. Now, I think at one point there was an interactive display, you could turn the handle, but it's broken off, and you could make that vehicle travel along. Let's go up here now, and we can have a look at. So, as you go around the museum, there's these little um, stations, platforms, and you can have a closer look at Loco. So, here I said, here's Falcon. We have a steam Loco here called Dunloose Castle. I actually went to the real Dunluce Castle last year when I was up here and I went to the uh, Giant Causeway in Bushmills Railway. If you want to have a look at the video of the tram arriving there, click link on screen now. I'm interested here, well, so it's got London Midland Scottish, London Midland Scottish LMS did run some of the railways up here. It's also got NCC, I believe that's Northern Counties Committee. This is interesting, this is a tablet exchange. So as the train was going along, you could pick up a tablet for the signal. It looks like you could also put a tablet there to hand it back. A tablet is like, holds a token so you can work, say, the points, or it gives you permission to be on the line. There's various different, it's a whole other video as well, I think. Um, but yeah, it was an automatic tablet pickup. And you have a nice a diesel, lo another diesel logo. It's a really nice model down here of Inchicore Works. So you've got, this is like, the, this is the Dublin to Cork main line, passing it. I've passed on the train, I've taken pictures of that tower quite a few times. It's always an exciting start to a train journey as you leave Dublin, Houston, and you go past Inchicore Works. If we come around this side, have a look down here, it gives you an idea of what they've been like inside. So many different steam locos. Great to see all these green steam engines, loads of them. And then that's locos on shed. So that's a really, a really nice model. Let's let you see the front of the shed. Well then, interestingly, there's some British stuff, Flying Scotsman and a Britannia locomotive, Polar Star, so like one of Oliver Cromwell's uh, sisters. Anyway, let's go now and find some more locos that you're not going to see anywhere else but here, really. And that's what makes going to the Island of Ireland exciting, is although you're still in Britain, well, certainly in Northern Ireland, you'll see some really unique locos. Look at this. That's a steam tram. Belfast Northern Counties Railway, I think that is. Um, there are boards everywhere telling you about everything. And then, so I could have a look, but I'm fairly sure that's what that is. And then this loco, Phoenix. That's a diesel loco that used to be a steam loco. I think it it's, um, looks like it's one of these chain-driven locos. If you look down there, you can see a chain. So it does happen. There have been various locos that were diesel or were steam and got converted to diesel there's also a locomotive called emmet two foot gauge loco in the uk which is steam it used to be a diesel it's basically steam like a built on the frames of an old diesel this is quite cool this is one of the um yeah one of the county donegal railway rail cars that's like is it? it's the committee rail car it's tiny it's not much bigger than a family car but if you traveled on the county donegal railways you'd have more likely traveled on one of these rail buses it is articulated I'd love to have had a ride on them. I have seen one, I have been to the museum up at Londonderry where they have got some more of these. That's a museum, it's not always open but it's worth going to if you can get there. Talking of rail buses, there's a, although it looks smaller, that's a five foot three inch gauge rail bus. There's Dunluce Castle again. There I said is I keep Falcon, like I say it's like a giant miniature loco. There's a narrow gauge Peckett loco here. I saw a loco a bit like this at the Downpatrick, not Downpatrick, County Down Railway, that's another video, um, 
the Giant Scores and Bushman's Railway in the shed. They have a Peckett steam loco, and I believe it's the same as this one. I managed to talk my way into the shed when I went there. And then here we have a couple of simplex diesels, which would have been built in Bedford in England, so they would have been quite common working on various narrow gauge railways. Now what we're going to do, we're going to go and have a look at the bigger steam locos, and then we'll fit it, we'll have finished in this gallery, but there's a few more galleries to have a look around. So this is a huge tank engine, Belfast and County Down Railway, I believe, and this was built by Bay of Peacock in Manchester. And then there's a couple of narrow gauge locos, big, big narrow gauge locos. I said, that's Maeve, so she was built in Shakur Works in Dublin. This one, this is called Saddle Tank, was built by Rob Stephen Hawthorns in England. And I think this tank engine here was built at Dundalk, which was, you could arguably say it's the crew of Ireland or the Swindon of Ireland, where there's a town on the line down to Dublin where there's big railway works. So there's one of these locos or a similar loco outside the museum in Londonderry. There is also the County Donegal Railway Museum, which I've not yet been to, but I'd really like to go there. And then this is another narrow gauge loco. Which lines is this off? Oh, this is the Ca Cavan and Leitrim Roscommon Light Railway locomotive. The Cavan and Leitrim Railway, there is a preserved section, so one day I should go to the Cavan and Leitrim Railway and have a ride behind what they've got. We can go in one of the Cavan and Leitrim Roscommon Light Railway carriages here. Let's have a look inside. So, it'd be nice to think we were going somewhere, but we're just having a look. Oh, this is quite posh. Funny there, you've got like seats like that, so you can sit four people on that side, but you could sit quite a few on this side. Here. Okay. I'm assuming that's got to be first class. This is probably second class, and that's a bit dark, so you can't see a lot. It's got um, padded seats, and then this is first class wooden seats. It's a clear story carriage, you can see the windows up there. So, this is a narrow gauge, quite big narrow gauge, I, well, um, I'm fairly sure it's a three foot narrow gauge, which, you know, is bigger, the Isle of Man railways have three foot narrow gauge, so it is a, what I call a, a big narrow gauge, I suppose the standard gauge railways are bigger, so the narrow gauge railways are bigger, there are, there's loads and loads of different gauge railways in Ireland, so that's another one of those narrow gauge wagons there, we go through here, we can have a look. There's a really nice model here. It's like a miniature size, but it is only a model of um, the first class dining to look at the size of it and the roof lifts up you can see inside. That's quite cool. And then this, I believe, is what one of the carriages will look like. Let's go, won't we go down there, it's got up here. There was a Dublin and Kingstown Railway, which was the first railway to be built in Ireland, and that and um, so that ran from Dublin down to what we now know as Dunleary. And if you're wondering what those carriages were like, probably a bit like that. That's the William Dargan Saloon. He was like the pioneer of Irish Railways. And here, this is, like I said, I think her name's Mavis. Apologies if it isn't. Number 800, built at Inchicore Works in 1939. And we're going to go on her footplate. You can, this is for allowed to. I'm not going to randomly climb me up here. Massive. It, it feels, um, feels so it's got that British feel. It doesn't feel like being on a big German thing. Like, it feels a bit like perhaps a Bullet Pacific or, or that kind of thing. It reminds me a bit of a Great Western King class, but it feels bigger. I'll give you a few out there. So, what I think I'm going to do now, I'm going to go to the next hall and uh, we're going to go and have a look at some tram no let's just do let's go in this loco first then we'll go and look at trams but it's so exciting all these different steam engines which you're only ever going to see here you're not going to see anywhere so now we're on a british built steam loco oh this is good look we can see straight into the william dargan saloon and there is a dummy of the man himself so as if i'm the driver i'm not going to take you by train but we're going to go and have a look now from the railway hall we're going to go down to the tramway hall Well, having enjoyed looking around the railway gallery, I'll leave the Guinness behind. I might have one in the pub later, but that's it for Guinness in this video. Let's have a look around some more of the museum. Now, I come here. It's a bit dark in here, but that's kind of part of the atmosphere. This is a Titanic exhibition, so 
it gives you various, shows you what would have been some of the property and everything that would have been on the ship. So it's quite interesting to see. And if we go into the middle, there's quite an interesting model stroke diagram. You've got the ship sinking, as you can clearly see, and it shows the, like each type to, of passenger or staff. So that's the crew. So here they're saved. They're the ones who unfortunately didn't make it. And then we've got the first class, first class that was saved, first class that didn't survive. Not less first class didn't survive. Second class, probably about half and half. And then the first class, not many survived. Unfortunately, a lot of people drowned. So it's uh, quite a sad gallery. Yes. So what I'm going to do, I'm not going to focus too much on it, as fascinating as the whole Titanic story is. I don't really feel I'm the person to tell you that. I'm going to take you out of the sort of darker gallery, back into more light. Here we have some trams, which is quite exciting. So we're looking down on different types of trams, a couple of open top ones. I'll talk more about what they are when we get down there. There's another traditional double-decker tram. Well, this one we can have quite a good look at from here. So we can see it says Sutton, Hill of Hoth, Hoth. That was the Hill of Hoth tramway. I've been to the Hill of Hoth. That's near Dublin. It's a branch off the Dublin's area rapid transit, or the DART network. It's a bit like Dublin's equivalent, I suppose, of London Overground. And there was a tramway that went up over the Hill of Hoth, which I've walked around the Hill of Hoth. The tramway, unfortunately, isn't there anymore. But that's one of the surviving trams. There's one, there is a small transport museum at Hoth. There's one at Kreitz, and I believe there's one in America. There's one at Belfast trolley buses. Belfast have quite an extensive trolley bus network. Now, as we follow the path down, a bit like how we did in the railway hall, we see other trams. And it's nice if it's actually created street scene, giving the feeling of being in the town centre. And there's a, another tram, you can see the trolley pole, which it would have drawn from the wires. Now, talking of trams and how they would have um, drawn their power, here we have this tram here. Fintonia. That tram doesn't have a trolley pole. Have a look there. It was horse drawn. Now I find this quite a fascinating story. The Fintonia tramway. I hope that I think that's how you say it. I'm not entirely sure. Fintonia was a tram. Uh, was a town, and there was a railway line which passed fairly near, but not quite close enough to merit having a station. So there was Fintonia Junction, and from the junction station there was that horse-drawn tram, and the horse was always called Dick. Even if it was a mayor, it was always called Dick. So we'll, we'll go around there and see Dick, the horse, in a moment. We're just gonna make our way out of here, and we can have a look at the um, tram. So this is the street scene. So there's a Belfast tram there, it's going to Greencastle, and trolley bus, so here we are. I feel like we're on a, on a road now. Reminds me a bit of Milestones Museum in Hampshire, in England. I'm interested to have a look at the screen now. So we've got a couple of electric trams. We've got this Belfast City trams here. I think that is, um, yeah, it's horse drawn. See the horses, we'll see them at the front. So we've got a few horse, a couple of horse drawn trams. And then we'll go around various other models and things to see a fire engine. So there we are, that's Dick. Usually, as I said, a female, but that's Dick with a tram. Here's a few fire engines and there's a, a model tram there of Belfast City tramways so as I mentioned earlier the only trams now in on the island of Ireland are in Dublin um, but Belfast did have there's a, a bit of a diagram there giving you an idea of some of Belfast trams did ha they were talking about building a tramway 10 15 years ago in the end they built the glider buses which are quite interesting but not as exciting as a tramway this is an interesting one. This is the Best Brook and Newry Tramway Company, and it was an electric tram. Has a bit like a locomotive. So it's got kind of like rather than have wheels under the under the uh, tram body, you've sort of got a compartment for the electric motor. So that's quite exciting. Coming to here, you've got various other vehicles. There's one I find quite fascinating. Probably because it's a bit more modern than it is in my era. As nice as all these are, these aren't really vehicles I remember seeing. Got an Escort van, an M-Reg Escort. It's electric, they built a hundred of them. Does anyone know, are there any other survivors or is this the only one? It's uh, for the, is it for the Royal Mail? Yeah, for the Royal Mail. And behind, see another tramway. Now that 
is the, as I did mention it earlier, I mentioned the giant Causeway and Bushmills Railway, which is now has like a modern tram. It was at one point a steam railway, but this is the original um, tramway. Now, what was it? It called here, that tells me. Giant Causeway, Port Rush, Bush Valley Railway and Tramway. So, this is the vehicle from, or one of the vehicles from that tramway. And uh, there's some images of it. I'm assuming that's from that tramway. That's quite a nice street scene. I really like this one of a tram passing Dunluce Castle. We saw the locomotive Dunluce Castle. That's the picture there of the building, Dunluce Castle. So it's got, this is what they call a toast rack tram because it's like toast you slide in. And in this motor vehicle, it's a bit more luxurious. We've uh, protected you from the elements because I can tell you now it could be quite windy on the, uh, on the Northern Irish coast, as nice a coastline it is. This is really cool, this little Ulster bus, little bus. See, it's a model bus, but if you look closely, there is a steering wheel. Can you see that? So you could actually sit inside, or a child possibly could sit inside and give their friends some rides. Now, I walk down here, and that's, as I said, that's the hill of Hove Tram, that's the Newry Tram and the Fitonia Tram. There's a, another, that's a motor bus, that one. That one's a trolley bus. We're now going to go down another level. As I said, I do really like the building. I think um, it's kind of semi-brutalist. I like how it sort of takes you down and down, sort of reveals bits of the museum as you go. So as I look down there, I can I could just see wheels of cars. So it makes you think, oh, what are we going to see next? So we're now kind of going right down. And from here, you get quite nice view. Like, look, you're sort of looking up. The trams are above you. And um, you look ahead, I can see another car down there. We'll have a look at that. And then um, eventually the museum goes outside. There's another gallery right down the bottom. Um, I might not do that in today's video because that's kind of going beyond. Well, once we've left, the, once stuff comes off, isn't stuff that runs on rails, my sort of expertise isn't so great. So it's kind of like, I'm just going to show you some of these cars. I don't know too much about them, but we'll have a quick look. Ford Mondeo, I know what that is. I think they're all really nice to see. But as I said, I'm, um, although I do like classic cars, my subject is the railways. And uh, what have we got there? Is that, yeah, Ford Anglia. I know one of them. Vandom Poir. This is funny. Now, this car, these are the invalid cars. And I think that's a destruction order. There's not many left. But if you want to see one, there's a really, really good channel called Hubnut. Have a look at Link on screen now. He makes videos about cars. He's got one. So that is an invalid car. There's a, a Triumph there. And you've got the whole sort of nine. So not the Triumph, it's Cortina. Get my cars mixed up. That is a Ford Cortina. And there's the sort of 60s living room. So if you have that living room in the 60s, you may well have driven a Ford Cortina. There's a few more sportier cars along here. And um, what we got? What? Is that an MG there? Merc and uh, Triumph Stag. That's the Triumph. And then we have, I think it's a Rover taken apart for you to see how it's built. And that is a very old Peugeot. Admittedly, I only know that because I just read the sign. And then there is a Hillman Imp. Now, what we're going to do, we're going to go outside. Um, there's a couple of things I wanted to show you out here. Unfortunately, one of my favourite exhibits isn't here anymore, which is a bit of a shame. We go out past. The Mondeo. So we go out here, out outside. I don't know if the camera's picking it out, but I can hear a train departing Coltra railway station. It's, it's, we're not that far from Belfast city centre, but it has that really nice feeling of just being out and so far away from everywhere. I get this view of the building. I do really like the building. I think it really is a building. As I said, I like the interior. I like these sort of sloping bricks, how the water can just run down them. I think it's a building. The yes, it really has thought a lot about. Now, when I came here last time, as I said, it must have been, it was more than 10 years ago, down the bottom here, there was a miniature railway. Unfortunately, there isn't a miniature railway here anymore. I'm not entirely sure what's going on, but admittedly, before filming this, taking the video, I ran down here, well, I, didn't run, I came down here and had a look around. And uh, the miniature railway's not there. I wasn't expecting it to be running. I was kind of hoping to see it, but it appears to be 
gone completely. I was, um, it was run by one of the model engineering clubs, I believe, of the area. So um, it doesn't look like I'm coming back here to do a miniature railway Britain episode. I'm not saying I won't ever come back here, but there is something even more intriguing than this miniature railway, which I said has now gone. There's this lovely big oak tree. It wasn't actually what I brought you down here to see. There's something, now I didn't see this on my last visit. It must have been here, but it was summer when I last came. So all of these bushes you would have been really overgrown. But look, what's this? Early on, I was walking along there and I was like, that's a couple of rails, isn't it? Here we seem to have the remains of what must be a two foot gauge, narrow gauge railway, complete with sleepers and everything. Okay, the track's a bit buckled, would not try and run a train over it. There's literally trees growing through it, but the track continues. We're going to go up here. I haven't really supposed to do this, but um, I don't think it matters too much. Anyway, you can clearly see that's the remains of a railway line, and then there's a rail down there and it goes off. It's not that clear on camera, but if I come down here, you can clearly see there's a rail. So what on earth is going on here? It looks like, what I want to know about this railway. So if you know, um, please do comment and tell me, what, what, what was this? Did they do passenger rides here? Was it a construction railway when they built the gallery down the bottom? So I'm not going to include a gallery down the bottom in the video. It's interesting, but um, it's not really my area of expertise it's i think it was land sea and sky it's got stuff to do with boats aircraft and everything and um, i'm gonna go in this bush see if we can find any more i think anyone watching presents i'm going in here to have a wee but i'm not i promise um go through this huge rhododendron bush oh yeah yeah we see more of the track they're gonna anyone is anyone has seen me disappear they're gonna wonder what on earth i'm doing yeah so look the railway line it does continue it's probably again not clear on track on camera but I'm definitely definitely standing on a railway line if you look down here there's rails it's not that clear but there is there is railway there's a rail here I'm uncovering it I think it's not showing up on camera I promise you it's there we come out this way now so what's all this about please do comment and tell me and I think that kind of um, brings me to the end of this video a really fantastic transport museum but with a rather odd mystery narrow gauge railway what what was this for was it a contractor's line for building the museum did it once give rise whatever it did clearly was a railway and there were those simplex diesels in the top hall were they ever run on here did they even run steam on here please someone tell me i, I will probably ask on my way out as well if anyone knows but What's going on here? Please tell me. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video of the Ulster Folk and Transport Museum. Thank you very much for watching. Please do feel free to like, subscribe and comment. And what seems as far away from transport as ever, but under a lovely oak tree. Thank you very much for watching. Please do feel free to like, subscribe and comment. Goodbye.